hello and uh, a very uh, warm welcome uh, to Sunny Can. Um, not what any of us were expecting in this beautiful, beautiful pavilion. Um, but today uh, we're going to have a, a, a chat uh, about how to work with and produce with Prime Video France. Um, we're going to look at uh, Prime Video's French original content strategy, its acquisition strategy, just a little bit of housekeeping. What we're going to do is we're going to have a chat amongst ourselves first for the first half an hour. Uh, then there'll be time for questions, uh, potentially 10 minutes questions up to about 10.40. And then we're going to dive in into a specific project looking at overdose uh, and how overdose was brought to the screen in France. Um, and then we'll wrap at 11. But first of all, I wanted to introduce uh, my panel. Uh, and we, I have uh, Sahar Bagheri. Uh, you are the French head of content for Prime Video um, in France since last year. Uh, as part of your current scope, you and your team manage acquisitions um, of the first exclu uh, of, of exclusive direct service local content. Uh, theatrical pay to local movies and library co co catalog and international content with a kind of focus on films but also series and non scripted. And then I have Thomas Dubois, um, who is French head of originals. Um, he joined Amazon Studios in 2019. Uh, and became head of French Originals, dedicated to building a local French te team and finding the best uh, local scripted originals. And he oversees the French Studios team in charge of developing and producing series, movies and unscripted uh, for Prime Video. So welcome. And f uh, I thought we'd start with a kind of broad question. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about the global movie off offer on Prime Video? You know, how has the service evolved recently? What's on offer? I mean, Thomas, maybe I could start with you. So the first part we have around movies is original movies. So you have international or original movies that are led by the US team. I can name a few of them. The Tomorrow War, Without Remorse, Coming to America. And we are locally, uh, in each territories, producing our own local original movies. So far, we released six movies. Uh, among them, The Man Woman's Ball, uh, Overdose, that we will speak about later, uh, I Love America, um, and, and, and some others. Among those, what's interesting to note is that among those six movies, 50% uh, of them were directed by women. Uh, and we aim at continuing this trajectory by producing, let's say, four movies a year, uh, having in mind that we are really looking at producing temple movies that are going to define uh, the brand DNA and also shape what we are trying to do creatively. Uh, so this is the big part of the offer that I'm uh, overseeing, and, and Sar is completing this. Yeah, so on, on our side, we do acquire um, a very wide range of movies, and I'd like to give a big shout out to my team, so Gustave, Munia, Tugdual, for, for securing this selection. So to complement the local originals, we have we acquire exclusive direct-to-service movies. We have started to do so since 2020. Um, so with shorter rights and where IP belongs to the producers. And then uh, we do acquire uh, and invest in theatrical pay-to movies. And we can come back to that later. Um, we do also acquire international content. So we have announced um, recently over 10 highly anticipated shows, such as a couple of uh, Guy Ritchie's movies, um, and uh, obviously we also uh, handle library content, um, and our catalog helps to drive ours in the long term. And, and can I just ask a little bit about um, how these kind of movies live on the platform? How, how long are they on the platform for? What kind of rights, you, what, what rights are you acquiring? 
Um, so on our side, um, we, we get this question a, a lot um, because our model can be a bit different from uh, the existing. Uh, on direct-to-service movies, we are partnering more and more with uh, linear broadcasters um, to offer a second linear window after our first window, and uh, that benefits the film's life cycle overall. And uh, obviously, we also, um, by investing in theatrical cinema, this contributes also to the, the life cycle. And uh, library is really about um, longevity rather than immediacy in terms of rights. And Thomas? There's no one size fit all in terms of contracts. What we're trying to, to build is a catalog, right? Uh, but we are evolving in our approach in the contract setup and also in what we're doing uh, with our, let's say, internally produced movies. Uh, there was an announcement a few days ago, weeks ago, with a new created team uh, in charge of the distribution of uh, all our movies and series, which is uh, led by the US and, and composed by some of the MGM team and also the Amazon Studios uh, team. The idea is really to kind of being innovative and create kind of a new life cycle for our movies. They do not necessarily need to be forever exclusive to the service. So we're quite open to break new models and to, to innovate in this field. That's interesting. And then I was just wondering how, how you see your role within the industry. I mean, how, I mean, there are, I mean, the streaming landscape has changed so much in recent years. There are so many launches, so many platforms have emerged, but what is Prime Video's role? How do you perhaps compare to the others? What's the kind of, what's the positioning of Prime Video really? Well, I, I would say that we do offer a complementary way to, to watch content and, and movies and knowing how uh, in France, partic particularly the country is uh, one of the most important in Europe in terms of movie production. And um, I think our value is really in the, the breadth of the content we offer. Um, we are really a unique service, so not only SVOD, but also video on demand and channels and sports as well. Um, so I think also what our added value is that we want to be a, a positive force uh, in the industry and an integrated uh, player. And as such, we do take risks uh, in acquiring content that we think our customers will like. And um, I, I think that that's our role as well. Is uh, for example, for example, Salam premiered last year in Cannes, and Brut contacted us to acquire Salam, and we did because we thought Melanie Diane's movie um, it was intimate and it would resonate with our young audience. And I think that is our role. It's an additional way to make and and watch different films differently. I think we also want to be a creative force and, and trying to create uh, new ways, new opportunities for producers. We, we are a partner not only for producers, but for broadcasters, for writers, for, for directors. And our role in this industry is to support creative vision. We are here to support directors' vision, writers' vision, and to kind of allow them to finance their ideas to the level that they would want to, and to, to kind of deliver for our customers movies that are ambitious, that are differentiating, uh, and, and we, we're doing so by really working hand in hand with a, a bunch of, of different partners, really from broadcasters, writers, directors. Uh, that's quite important for us to be seen as a partner right. and, and as someone that is really open to any kind of creative discussion. Thank you. And, and, and how about film within the context of the service? I mean, the, the perception, I think, is that we've seen this kind of golden age of series in um, recent years. And perhaps film has been less talked about. I don't know, it hasn't had the attention that series have had. What, what's Prime Video's attitude towards film? You know, how important is film towards Prime Video? 
as we've said, like the offer of movies on the service is quite big, right? With the local regional, DTS, pay to, all of that. So it's kind of a pillar in our offer. We, we do believe that there's no choice to be made in between series and movies, right? It all goes back to the story. What's the best support for the story? How long should it take to tell the story? And we, we really want to produce movies. And, and when we look at the numbers of the local original programming and DTS programming, we produced more movies than series locally since we started, right? If we combine like the six movies I mentioned, the local original movies to the movies that SARS team acquired, we're at about 14 movies uh, already, while we did a few less series. Mm -hmm. So I would not say that the movies is the poor parent, right, uh, yeah. within our offer. It's really something structuring, and we do believe that there's a big appetite. And when we look at the customer response to the movies that we delivered, it always has been great. So we really think that we, we have a role to play there. Yeah. In acquisition, 25% tw of our local pre-buys are local movies, and, uh, and there was a CNC study published a few months ago that uh, that ranked Prime Video as number one as VOD service in terms of volume of, of French movies available on the service. And also our big movie hits are movies, our big hits are movies like BDF or Je te veux moi non plus um, and originals uh, on Thomas' side. So yeah, definitely not the poor relative. Right. That's so interesting. You know, I mean, just seeing the kind of uh, focus that you have on movies but i mean turning more specifically to the kind of movies that you're looking for i know it's the kind of question that everyone asks but what kind of films what kind of content are you looking for on the movie side it's quite quite simple the first thing is that as we are all seeing there's there are a lot of content launched everywhere right movie series and scripted so the first thing that we look at is something that can be buzzy mm -hmm. conversational that you will not have the feeling that you will have already watched it right so really something that will be differentiating and then we're, we're not reinventing the wheel right we're focusing on key genres uh, the first one being uh, action thriller movies. We've, we've, we will speak about other those later, uh, as it's the case study, but we are launching in two weeks uh, a big action comedy, uh, Medellin by Franck Gaston Bide. So this, this genre, action thriller, action comedy, is quite important for us. First of all, because it's usually super successful in France, but there's also an international appetite for this, for this genre. Then we are looking at comedies, right? But comedies with a specific tone, uh, something that is a bit, let's say, taking a step aside and, and offering something with strong heroes, heroines that you will not have seen anywhere else with the intent, in a sense, to create franchises. So to have movies that can be returning. Uh, for example, we, we're producing a movie uh, with uh, Jonathan Cohen, which is called Sentinel, that will be released before the end of the year. And this is quite a singular hero, right? Uh, it's a singer and a cope uh, that is neither succeeding in being a cope or in being a singer, but still he has to cover a, a super important mission. So comedy is quite a, a, a pillar for us. Uh, and and Sar mentioned Bedia, uh, DTS acquired, that was quite a, a wonderful success for us. And the third, let's say, pillar in terms of editorially what we're looking for uh, into movies is surprised, right? Trying to surprise with things that are not necessarily expected on the service. We we started in the producing movies with the Melanie Laurent movie, The Mad Woman's Ball. Uh, then we did a movie with Maimouna Doucouré, uh, which was called Awa. And those were more, let's say, indie uh, movies, but still they had such a strong story to tell, stories about women uh, with strong heroines that we, we do believe that we have a role to play also by supporting those, those titles. It's all 
about the portfolio view, uh, the combination of those action, comedy, and sometimes uh, more uh, indie movies. And, and to finally, we, we are also trying to establish ourselves with some seasonal movies. Uh, there might be some announcements coming soon uh, around a, a certain period of the year where we're going to try to also be more opportunistic in the programming and, and, and the storytelling. So it's the tone, trying to find stories that are fish out the water, but all of that having the necessity to be temples, right? right. And how, how many movies are you commissioning a year? Um, and versus series, perhaps? I don't know if you could just give an indication of quantities. We, we, we are commissioning an average of four movies a year. Right. Uh, and, and for series, it depends on the year. It can be three, it can be four, it can be two. So far, we've produced, as I said, more, more movies. But it's not just about the movies I'm commissioning. It's also about the movies Sar is commissioning. Right. And combine, it goes up to eight movies a year. Yeah, on our side, I would say about, it's not in marble, but in set in stone, it's about like four direct-to-service movies, uh, local, right. and then about, let's say, 15 theatrical pay to movies for cinema, and, and also like about maybe 20 to 25 international titles. And obviously, yes, um, comedy and uh, light-hearted, easy-to-watch content is part of our DNA, and we have seen in our successes that Customers have an appeal for it, obviously action and thriller. And um, but I would also add like strong heroes and, and heroines. Um, we, we released La Graine, produced by Pate and, and Les Films du Cap, directed by Eloise Lang, a couple of weeks ago. And it, it's really about um, the struggle and the fight of a lesbian couple um, to access to assisted procreation and all the obstacles. But that can also relate to everyone. Um, also, another hero, Tom, a solitary geek in uh, drone games, uh, produced by White Lion Films and directed by Olivia Abu. So that, that's also something we're looking for. And I would just add that um, as a, we have um, we have to commit to a specific um, DNA because as an international service with a U.S. headquarter and also with local teams that whose mission are to um, straighten and reinforce the local slate, we have to attract the widest possible audience. Um, and uh, this will be through all this portfolio of movies. And just to close, I think what's important to say, because there's always feeling for, for producers that there are a lot of doors to enter. Mm -hmm. So we are here working together with our teams as a French content team locally and we're building a slate that is uh, really complementary in between all the work that Saar and her team is doing mm. and the work that me and my team are doing. Well, on the content side, could I just ask a little bit about um, specialist or art house as well? Is, is, do they have a place on the content with, with, within the content that you're looking for? They do. They, they do, as I said, we, we, we reference the Mad Woman's Ball, we reference Awa. The thing is that we need to make sure that we are the right house for them. Right. And that we can, and it's the same not only for our house, but for all the, the movies that we're looking at, is how are we going to make them a success, right? Mm. Are we the right partner to help them make a success? But it's not only just about the, the, the movies that are uh, exclusive to the service, it's also about what Sar uh, is, is composing through Pay2. Yeah. Uh, Can I just turn to how to work with Prime Video? Um, it would be very helpful, I think, just to explain how you work, how you source, how you kind of, um, how you like to kind of get, find projects, basically. Um, at what point do you get do you get involved in say script development project what, at what stage would project be brought to you you know pitch bible development script what about the talent um, on screen and off screen can you just talk to us a little bit about how you set up um, projects we we are really so first we are developing projects we are investing in development which is the the important thing here and because we can then like start working on a project at all stage. For example, 
the conversation with Maimouna Dukure that I uh, mentioned earlier started with a three-line pitch, right, about our. And she had a, a vision of what she wanted to do, and we were extremely seduced by the vision she had, and we knew that we were the right partner to get her along the way. Same with Franck Gastambide, it all started with a phone call, right, where I was like, okay, Franck, we need to do something together. Uh, of course, with your producers too, the, the Mandarin Production. And, and he was like, I, I have a title, I have a pitch. And yes, we started to work together and to, to develop. And in other moments, you can come with, let's say, a treatment. It can come with a first version of script. Like, it really depends. The thing is that we are he here to support the director's and the writer's vision. So it's all about starting the story with making sure that we are creatively aligned on where the movie and the story that we want to tell should go. Because we're not here to tell people what to do, right? When we're starting to work with directors, with writers, we're really here to work with them they're not working for us, okay. right? It's quite key to say that. So all stage, we are quite involved in all the steps along the production, which is development, then there's a green light, then there's a pre-production, then there's a shooting, then there's editing, and, and we are here all step of the way, uh, but really creating a creative dialogue and, and very respectful of the creator's vision. Thank you. And Saha, how about you? I mean, you, you'll get involved a little bit later in the stage, but could you just explain yeah. sure, when so and how? Yeah, we, we do get involved at, at the later stages. So usually uh, we need a good first version of a scenario and of a producer attached to the project. Right. Um, and then the IP belongs to the producer. So of course we will take and um, make key creative decisions together, but the producers here drive the development process. And, uh, and of course, on decisions such as director and cast, um, in most cases, actually, directors had been already attached to a project, but there are cases when they were not. In that case, yes, definitely let's discuss together. And on cast, it's great to already have a short list um, to submit to us, and then we can discuss together. It's super important that we have this conversation because um, first we we know who which talent will be enjoyed by our customers, and also we we want to ensure a balanced slate. So if, for example, we realize that we are working 15 times with the same talent, it, it might be problematic. So it's really important we stay ahead of, of these decisions together. And what about approving uh, projects? I mean, how do you decide? I mean, and how much does the kind of famous algorithm that people talk about at Amazon come into it? How much is it a creative kind of personal decision? Um, I mean, Thomas, I don't know, maybe I could ask you first, but how, how do you decide what to press go on? There's no algorithm, right, that is deciding. I think maybe with IA in the future, I don't know how it's going to go, but still we're here and we're very human, right? So it's not about algorithm, it's about Cre first creative vision, make sure we are, we are aligned on what the creative vision is. Then there is quite an important point, which is the, vi the financial viability of a project, right? Are we investing the right am amount? Are we going to amortize it the right way? And do we have the, the right approach to then make the title a success? Mm -hmm. And those are the, let's say, key decision-making mm -hmm. uh, elements. Mm -hmm. And for you, Saha? Um, I, w I would add that obviously there's no algorithm or else we would be millionaires. But, uh, but I, I, I still do believe um, insights and uh, research on content is important. It's not crucial. It's not that that help us make the decision. Like the, the first and foremost is creative conviction. But um, on my side, I, I do come from content research, and I, I do value the work of these teams. But to help support and uh, creativity and conviction on creative is really what prevails. And, and once you're 
working on a project. Can you just talk a little bit about the relationship, perhaps, with producers, directors, writers? How, 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 how does that process kind of work? What can Prime Video bring to, um, to, to, to producers, writers, directors? Um, you know, what are the benefits, I suppose, of, of them coming to you rather than to anybody else? I don't know. I, th I think they are really the producers are really an interface between the business and uh, the creatives and the talents and w uh, we we have a pretty flexible approach when it comes to partnering together and and uh, trying to be agile in uh, in how to make that project happen. Um, so we kind of try to work as a fluid group with them um, with regular back and forth um, and also. Um, nurturing these long-lasting relationships with producers, studios, um, and distributors, and also the, the talents and the creative team. And my team is doing a terrific job nurturing these relationships on, on a daily basis. Um, so, yeah, I would guess that's the way we kind of want to work. And I think when, when producers get to know us, um, how we work, who we are, what we're looking for, I think that they want to work with us with again, you. right? <laughs> <laughs> and Tom, Thomas? I think it's quite the same, right? We are here to work with people. Mm -hmm. And we are here to support. We are, on the original side, we're bearing the financial risk, right? So at some point, we also need to get involved and to make sure that things are going the right way. But we're, we're selecting our partners because of their expertise, right? So we're not here to teach them things. We're really here to make the best content and, and try to, let's say, break some ceiling, be innovative, mm. and tell big stories. And then can I just quickly ask you about, um, you know, Prime Video is obviously a global service. How international should French original content be, you know, I mean, are you, are you thinking, right, this has to be something different, I have to have international cast in this, I have to have an international story? And, and also within this, you, you, you have the kind of gl the global team in LA who are making very global kind of films. I suppose, how, how, what do you do that is different from what they do and how international should your projects be versus how global their projects are? I wonder if you could just talk about the international aspect of Prime Video the, the, the good thing is that when you produce and when you do a movie or even a series with us, there's a possibility for it to be seen in 240 territories and countries. So there is a window, an international window for this content. That being said, not all of the content that we're doing is meant to travel. And it, you know it from the moment of the pitch because there are key genres that are more attractive for people internationally. We spoke about action uh, earlier and over those, we're going to speak about it, which was an international success. We're launching Medellin in two weeks, and there is a big push and support uh, across the globe for the title. So there is an opportunity uh, for our title to travel, but not all of them. It's, ha it's all about being created and taking the right swing mm -hmm. in this field. We are producing French language content, so this is the big difference with our uh, colleagues uh, in the US. Uh, even if most of our content is then localized, meaning dubbed and subbed uh, in a wide variety of languages. Uh, so this is not a blocker, you know, to be uh, in French language than to travel. There's always this uh, impression from creators, writers, directors, producers that for a mov movie to travel, it needs to be half in English or in English. No, I think we're not in that era anymore. And, and we are aiming at proving that more and more with some of the launches that are coming. Um, so the, the main difference, I would say, is the language uh, and, and to make sure that we're not setting up things to be international because we do believe that it's, this needs to be organic, right? Uh, and sometimes the more local the story, the more it will travel. 
That being said, if we have an organic opportunity through the story to cast an international person, that's great because then you can feature this person in your key art and it can reach more people. And we, we did this uh, with Franck Gaston Bid in Medellin by having Mike Tyson uh, being part of the film. And it was written this way, right? It was not changed to say, oh, we need an English or a US person. It was really organic. So there's a possibility for our content to travel, not all of it, mm. uh, and, and we're really pushing for that when we think that there's an opportunity. But it's also totally fine if you come to us with a movie that is hyper-local, uh, because we need that also. Fantastic. And Saha, how about for you? Um, so, so yes, uh, you said you make, uh, what is the difference, but in our roles in France and in other locales, our, really our mission is to make and acquire shows that will appeal to our customers locally. And that can be international shows or local shows. And uh, on acquisition side, um, it will be really a title by title decision. So um, when we believe a title will travel, we manage it in a certain way for in the rights we acquire, for example. So for BDE, produced um, by Marvelous and Zoe and Co, we did acquire international rights. Uh, and then for the movie La Graine, we did focus on specific countries, including in EU. Then th there can be also titles that we think will be hyper-local, at least for Prime Video. And in that case, um, international distributors can take international rights as well, and we focus on France. And then on uh, language, my team does handle also international titles, so they do receive scripts in English from, from sales agents or distributors or French entities of US shows. Okay, fine. I'm going to ask one more question, because um, I think we're, we're going to turn to Q&A in a sec. And, and it was just a la last question, and it was just about the EU regulations, the Audiovisual Media Services Directive, a year in, how you're kind of meeting the obligations that are set out by that, how much they are a determining factor, I suppose, in what you're, what you're doing. Um, so, so, end of last year, we did sign a, a four-year agreement with, with the main uh, industry locals to, to define a local framework. Um, as you may know, um, we need to invest 20% of our local revenue in French content every year. Um, so with the agreement that we signed, we committed to stronger diversity and support of independent projects. So for this first year, we have uh, contributed to about 15 um, cinema shows, and we're super happy to have collaborated with Gaumont on, on a couple of movies with them. So at, at Talur with Pio Marmaille and Ei Aydara, which started shooting a few weeks ago. Uh, C'est le monde à l'envers from Nicolas Vanier. We also have um, a few um, dramas and dramedies focused really on important social topics such as um, immigration, uh, mental health, sexual harassment, and also we're super proud of, um, of the first directorial debut of Reda Kateb with Sur un fil. Um, and we also offer more targeted movies, and this is interesting to, to use also the, in our portfolio the cinema slate to to offer different kinds of movies, such as horror um, and fantasy, uh, crime and thriller. Um, so for example, we have Le Mangeur d'Âme, produced by Phase 4, starring Virginie Ledoyen, Paul Ami, and, and Sandrine Bonner, and, uh, which is shooting right now. Fantastic, thank you. I'm just going to open this up to the floor now to see if we have any questions. We've got about five minutes for questions before we go to talk about overdose. Um, there's a gentleman in the front. I think we've got a mic coming round. If you could. I'm Bill Zook. I'm with 8, Eight Ball Entertainment out of the US. I had a question about how we as producers can appropriately create content that will fit into a pricing model that allows us to make money and Amazon to make money. Everything is so, in the streaming world, everything is so opaque that I may make a film that is a beautiful film at 16, 000, at 16 million, you may only want to pay me 10 million for it. I lose 6 million. I think it, 
We, we said that we are not one size fit all, right? We have different models and we are not now only looking at financing on our own. Like Sar team is doing pre-buy, there are also other partners that can jump on the movie if we need an additional six million that you would need to do your movie, right? So the, it's really about approaching the financing of our movies the right way and not only through our own perspective so we we and we're working on that it's it's like innovating distributing having a, a linear uh, broadcast of the movie afterwards which we did uh, example on the, on the bal des folles which is a, a an original movie it was 10 to 10 12 18 months after its release on the service broadcast on one of tf1 channel in prime time and it's an additional revenue right so it's all about thinking of new models to make sure that we're going to have the right amount to, to produce the movies. Thank you. Um, any more? One more question. A lady there, please. Hi. Um, uh, I finished school and I'm making a documentary. And I was thinking, um, I know in some platform there is documentary, but are you interested one day to produce some documentary or it is just for movies or series? So um, we are in Cannes, so obviously we did focus on movies this morning, but yeah, our, our Prime Video service have um, uh, scripted series, movies, unscripted documentaries, um, animation, and uh, in different categories. And uh, yes, we do offer documentaries either exclusively or within our catalog or within our service called Prime Video Direct that allows um, also providers to submit their uh, shows and then uh, get paid based uh, on um, how successful it was. So yeah, there's different ways to have it accessible. Thank and you. Uh, I'm, I'm, af uh, yes. I'm afraid actually, I'm, I'm gonna have to actually, I'm, I haven't left enough time for questions, I'm afraid. We're gonna have to move on to the overdose um, focus of this um, session. So at this stage, I'm going to ask Saha to kindly leave the stage. I'm going to get closer to a heater. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> warm up somewhere. But thank you very much um, for your contribution. And then I'm going to um, invite onto the stage um, Maureen Ford, uh, the director of cinema production at Gomor, and Guillaume Kolbock, producer at Gomor, who were both involved in the making of Overdose. Welcome. Um, so, Marine, uh, Thomas and Guillaume all worked together to create and bring to um, Prime Video um, the action thriller Overdose. Um, and I just want to ask a first question really <coughs> What was the collaboration between um, Prime Video and Gomont Overdose? Um, what can you kind of share with us, really, to illustrate how I mean how um, Prime Video um, kind of works and puts together um, a project like this? So first, the we were looking at producing action and thriller movies, right? Uh, Overdose was the first one that we did, and to do so, we wanted to make an entrance with a great partner that can produce those type of movies, uh, namely Gaumont, but also working with a name, a signature, and a strong director vision that can deliver something with high stakes, right? And it was Olivier Marshall. So when Gaumont came to us with, let's say, the pitch of the movie, uh, we were like, it was an instant uh, evidence to say, this is our opportunity to get through that field and, and maybe to, to make a first success in the action thriller genre. Uh, so we, we were really at a moment where we wanted to explore and Gaumont came with a, with a pitch and then like we started to work. Was, was there anything specific about the pitch that caught your... The first specific thing was Olivier Marshall, like who has such a strong uh, universe and vision, and who is—it's not only French known, right? He's also had—he has also had uh, other successes with Gaumont and Rock City uh, internationally. Uh, and then it was the adaptation of a book, something really straight, and 
there was a woman character who was the lead and which was something new in the proposition that uh, Olivier was, was doing because he did not necessarily have strong women character in his previous movie. And so this was the two main things that led us to say, there's something to do. And then, um, Maureen, why, why, why Prime Video? What, what was the thinking for you um, in terms of approaching Prime Video? Um, well, thank you for sharing, uh, for welcoming us to share this first uh, experience. It's actually the first experience that we had um, with a streamer uh, for an original film. Uh, so, um, um, on, on the collaboration, uh, what we really um, appreciate is the reactivity uh, of Thomas uh, when we propose um, the, the treatment uh, to uh, Thomas it was um, uh, evident as you say uh, to work together so um, I guess that's why uh, we went to, uh, to Prime mm -hmm. uh, we really wanted to work with them mm -hmm. um, and uh, as the name of the movie uh, uh, no not the name of the movie but as you know it's a go fast and it was a very go-fast production <laughs> because in uh, 18 months uh, we um, uh, agreed to uh, a budget uh, and uh, on, the, on the financing, which is a very important part, but I, I guess we will talk a bit uh, more after. Uh, and uh, after we agreed on a, on a script uh, and um, the, the script was delivered in August we shoot in uh, October, the film was delivered in March, and it was on screen uh, next October. So we did very, uh, very quick. Very, very fast. And um, I have to say that, um, I mean, Gaumont is producing movies for uh, theaters, mm. uh, mainly. And um, once you have agreed on the, um, on the financing uh, of, the, um, of the project, um, it's, it's uh, very comfortable because you can focus on the creative side. Right. Uh, which is different when you produce for cinema because you have all the financing to uh, to look after. I mean, we'll look. We'll, we'll maybe explore the difference yes. in a, in a second. But I mean, Guillaume. I mean, that that sounds both thrilling that it happened so fast, but also slightly terrifying as a producer. <laughs> how how, I mean, how, how well, was it for you? It, no, well, we like challenges at Google, right. so it was fine. No, the the good thing is we came to um, Amazon Prime with a ninety-page. Uh, kind of treatment with all the sequences. So we had the material there. It was super long. We could have made two films, I think, originally. Um, and so writing for Olivier w went quite quickly because he already really thought about the film. Um, but then it was challenging on several levels, obviously. Um, I think the, the good thing is, like in any collaboration, once you have the promises on the beginning which are clear, and you, you know where we want to go, and we're, we're on the same track for this, then it kind of flows, and you, you know, you deal with the problem when they come, but you know, the destination. Right. And 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 what about uh, the was it a focus on creating an international appeal to to overdose? I mean, were you um, did you shape it so it would appeal to international audiences, or were you only really thinking about French? Was it a French focused original? Well, I think it, it, originally it was a French focus, mm -hmm. of course. The thing is, I think Olivier Marshall's vision was a film that traveled in France and in Spain. And then in the casting process, he wanted to work with Alberto Aman or Carlos Bardem, which are international actors. So I think it's really about his vision of his film that suddenly grew into a, a film that could travel and maybe had assets for Amazon to try to kind of push them in different countries. Mm. And maybe a, Thomas can say about that. The key thing is that it was made organically, right? It was all about a story that was taking place in between Spain and France with characters that were part of this story that were potentially international roles, right? And as I said earlier, it's all about the genre. With action thriller, there is a uh, business opportunity to make them travel. Mm. So if you combine this organic story and organic moment where 
some people are speaking Spanish, you have Spanish stars, and then the genre that has a lot of traction outside of France, we were like, okay, we need to do something, right? And then this is where we, we started to work on it and to work with the local team in all of the territories, knocking on anyone's door like, oh, we have something great coming. And, and people were excited about. So it's, it's really the combination of a genre that has traction and a story that is organically offering you opportunities mm -hmm. to make it an international title. It was not made up. And, right. and I think that's what is important to say is we're never looking at making up an international title. It needs to remain organic and authentic to the story. And Beyond the reflection on the cast? Yeah. We, it, it, and, and it was really Olivier driving it. I think we did not... He was kind of the driver of this international appeal in the end without him like having in mind to make it international. So it's, it was all about the director's vision mm -hmm. that we supported and that finally offered us uh, a great opportunity. And... Marine, I was wondering, and, and, and Guillaume, for, for you at, 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 at Goma, what's been the difference, or what was the difference between producing a movie for a streaming service like Prime Video versus a movie uh, for the cinema? Were there kind of differences in approach that you took? Um, do you think there's a particular kind of movie genre that fits this, the, the streaming model? I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about the different, you know, what was it like compared to making a movie for the cinema, basically? Well, it's a different process, mm. of course. Um, as I was saying, uh, you are producing for the platform, so you are not the producer mm. of the movie. So um, uh, it's a great learning process uh, for us and also for, the, for, for Prime uh, to work on this, on this new way. Um, I would say that it's... Um, uh, Maybe on the organization process, uh, it can be a bit um, confusing um, at first because we are used to uh, have the control when we produce um, uh, on the artistic side, but also on the financing side. So in, in this specific case, uh, as you are producing for the platform, um, you are uh, uh, working more closely uh, with the with uh, with uh, with Thomas, uh, so it's it's a uh, it's a weekly process. Uh, but once you've you you've um, moved on that, uh, it's great. It's a, right. it's a, m m lots of freedom in creativity, uh, and um, and it's for us it's really a, a, new, a new opportunity. It's a complementary offer, and it's, uh, it's not, uh, we are still producing the same numbers of movies for theaters. So it's not a, we are not saying, okay, so now we are going to produce for platform and not for, for theaters. It's really a complementary offer to, again, uh, our aim is to uh, create stories, mm. and we create stories for a, a new, pu different public, and on an uh, international, worldwide uh, exposure, uh, which is very um, um, uh, creatively interesting for us and for the talent. And Guillaume, for, for you, Guillaume, I mean, again, the difference between the, a platform like Prime Video and, and the cinema, is there anything um, you could add there? No, I think Marine said a lot, but I think, w just if we step back a bit, I think, as a producer, you choose stories based on two assumptions. One, you kind of want to fall in love with the story uh, because you're going to work several years on it. And second, you're looking if it's, there's a market opportunity, opportunity there. And this analysis of the market is like a, a little um, pact you have with the talent being, if you like his story, you're going to find the money to produce it. And so this grid of lecture of the project, uh, uh, market-wise, um, has changed a little bit for us because now we can add a new grid. We, we have the theater cinema grid because we're also a distributor um, and we can add another grid to the choice of those projects because now we've learned the streamers grid, which is different sometimes. Um, and so uh, 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 I'm talking about, I'm making a step back because 
then we can go into the very details, but in terms of is there particular projects for particular platforms, this is not the way we kind of think it at Gomo. We, we're looking for great stories, great talents, and then we see on the grid where can it have the most interest, where can it work the best, is it a project because of its genre, because of its, the way it's written, uh, that should go on platforms or should go in theatres. And this is an ongoing conversation, it, it changes a lot, like in theatres, the strategy always changes a bit. But um, we're trying to have this approach so we make the good choices and then when we kind of think, oh, this is a great subject for a streamer, um, then several things come in, in, in motion, which is, it's not exactly written the same way. Um, you know, you look at films on device, mm. you can do a lot of things uh, uh, on the side. When you're in cinema, you're stuck in a, in a, in a, in a theater. So the way the story evolves in the, in the writing process changes a little bit. So then it's an ongoing conversation with the director or the writers. And then in the casting choices, I think the experience we had on Overdose was a uh, very interesting conversation about casting where we had sometimes assumption that Amazon kind of were looking for very renowned persons, um, which was true in part. But then we had great surprises where you know they were looking for fresh, face, fresh faces and and trying to push people that wasn't on necessarily on our uh, uh, theater grid in terms of analyze. Um, so that would enhance and you know uh, give more um, uh, well creative interest to the project. And then, of course, in the making of it, Marin said, there's all the process of reporting, <coughs> and, and this is take, takes a bit of time, but it's, it's a normal process. Mm -hmm. But I think, and the last thing is, um, I think maybe one of the fear of the, of the platform sometimes is to think that as they're financing 100% the film, there's a form of de-responsabilization of the producer. Um, and this is really not the case. Uh, as Marin said, we produce it in the same way um, and I think it's very important for streamers to have strong producers defending their strong uh, director's ideas and vision uh, to make singular films. Mm. Um, and sometimes we had strong conversations. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's true that the c narrative construction is very important. And for us, it was very new uh, to work for uh, public viewers mm. and it was very interesting to um to have all this conversation that we have during editing and maybe in the future if we uh because we always learn <laughs> from our first experience uh maybe we will uh, take more time during the the first phase phase of writing um and but again on this specific project we were very uh, we are, we were in a very fast uh, mm. uh, process yeah I think there are two key things in what we're saying is when when we finance a movie, most of the time it's a hundred percent, right? Mm. So with this comes more reporting. While when you are producing a, a, a movie for theaters, you have a lot of different partners. Yeah, yeah. So they are not the same things at stake. Uh, but that being said, the key word in what I think Marine and Guillaume said is being in a conversation. Even if it means that sometimes we do not agree, we always found our way that was uh, fine for everyone. Mm -hmm. And the key thing, again, I wanted to say it is respecting the vision of the director, Olivier Marshall. This is why we love to work with producers, is that we are all here to support a vision of a talent and to make sure that we're going to allow this, this person to have a strong success for the, the movie he or she delivers. And are you planning on collaborating again? Is there no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we obviously, we are always Overdose was a big success for us. It was the most viewed non-English speaking content across the globe. It was not just movie, it was content. So it broke through a lot, not only in France, but in the US, in Latin America, in Asia. And if you manage to get this first international success with the, the people that are making it, you want to renew it. Right. And we are all about long-term relationship. Uh, we are 
we are rel relatively recent service, but the people we are, w the producer, the talent we are working with, we are trying to get to them, not being just opportunistic on a one-shot thing, we want to build with them. Because the first time they work with us, as Marine said, they learn things, and when we work with them, we learn things. Mm. So it's in a relationship, you need this first step of discovery, and then if it match, you want to, to continue. So there are a lot of things that we're discussing right now with the Gaumont team uh, in the action genre, and, and not only, uh, mindful of the experience we had on overdose, and, and as we think we can renew this type of success. And in the same way, Olivier Marshall and, and other talents that we work with, we're continuously speaking with them. They're not exclusive to the service, but if they had a great idea that they think we are the right people to do it with, we're here to discuss. Uh, yeah. yeah, of course we want to uh, <laughs> follow our uh, collaboration with Amazon. Um, uh, it, we bringing talent and stories uh, on, uh, on streamers, it's a, it's a great opportunity for us, and especially as uh, this one was a great success. Uh, maybe sometimes we, uh, we, we, we'd love to have more uh, backup from the uh, audience for the worldwide. But um, I, I guess m me, what I'd love to is maybe one day to uh, have a, a collaboration where, where we have a, an original with Prime with a theatrical window <laughs> at first. <laughs> I mean... We, we like to innovate. Yeah. <laughs> This is what we were discussing earlier. It's always a conversation and on innovation. We're not, there's no one size fit all. We're not set in one model. Uh, so to, to we are also super fed by the producer's feedback and, and listening to them and, and trying to think you know, innovatively with them. Well, I think that's probably all we've got time for, but I think it's a good point to kind of leave in a funny way because you kind of forget that Amazon has only, I think you've only been had a, f a French kind of original strategy since 2019. So it's a very young service, actually, isn't it? You know, it's a young team. And, you know, I think, like all young teams, it's evolving. You know, things are changing. And we've learned an awful lot about that today, about how the teams work, who does what. It's been hugely insightful. Um, I'd like to thank Thomas Sahar earlier. Um, and also Marine and Guillaume for coming and sharing their experiences um, for what I think has been a fantastic panel. So if you could put your hands together for them. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you. for your time. Thank you.